actually shows up at some god thing or something and starts smashing shit, attacks the gods, takes him prisoner. <laughs> it's such Indra. a weird moment, too. He just shows up and he's got the big axe and he's just like, fuck up your bench. <laughs> fuck up your other bench. Oh, man. Okay, you have way more benches than I was <laughs> expecting. This seems less impactful now. Like, I was going to do a whole job. It's just benches. There's like nine benches in this room, guy. <laughs> wow, it's a lot of bench. Okay, I'll tell you what. Bring me something that isn't a bench and then I'll go back to the benches. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, unless you offer us something from the chimeric, psilocybin-inspired, infanticide-heavy Marvel Cinematic Universe that is the Hindu religion, in which case we become equal opportunity atheists. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Let's talk about killing babies. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Normally I do a little thing here, but let's get right to it. Let's go. <laughs> Kill some babies. All right. Well, this is, I, I should warn the new listeners, that's going to be a joke later. Later on, you're going to learn that he <laughs> they, didn't want to, in the movie, the there's idea a of lot of baby children. killing. So now that, <laughs> now that we've made our <laughs> podcast seem normal to the new listeners, <laughs> let me finish the intros here. Sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Well, I mean, now that you've limited that we can only talk about baby killing in the movie, I feel... <laughs> Creatively restricted, if we're being honest. Hi, new listeners. Welcome to the show. Um, like to just right. get you in feet first. <laughs> All right. Well, Eli needs a minute. So while he's recovering from that unexpected slight, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched Bal Ganesh. It's the story of some early Hinduism guy just making shit up when he got asked about the gods with animal heads and how that happened. It's just an hour and 45 minutes of some guy lying like a six-year-old about that story. Animal heads, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you like Tom Sawyer, but you miss all the decapitation, you... <laughs> We'll love this movie. It's like it's like DuckTales meets Duck Dynasty. It's just like it's very clearly a kids movie and also very clearly not for children. At <laughs> yeah, right. During this right. movie, it is a very strange. Yeah, well, see, that's the problem we're going to encounter in trying to break this one down. No matter what we do from time to time. It's going to sound like we're telling you about a dream we all had, mm. right? Like that's it's unavoidable. It's too insane. So we're going to try to our best to make this a, a cohesive episode. But when we say shit like, uh, you know, so the green guy Macarena's the toddler's head off and three headed Santa is super disappointed. You just have to roll with us. Those are all yeah. things. That's a thing <laughs> that that's a moment from this film. Yeah. And, it, and it's also weird because like throughout this movie, I feel like it would have been way more enjoyable if I didn't constantly have to remind myself that millions of people think this is true. Yeah, well, right? <laughs> and, and I'm sure when someone in India sees us talking about like the boat and Jonah inside the whale, it's it, they're going through the same experience. But as an I'm just I grew up with Jonah and the whale. So it's weird mm -hmm. that like there's an Indian kid being like, yeah, Ganesh got his head cut off and they found an elephant for play. I don't understand why this is hard for you. It's an old story. Everybody believes really? it. You're kind of a jerk for saying it's not true. I don't know. It's. <laughs> So stupid! This whale, the whale's on a turtle. That's dumb. Yeah, <laughs> so it was. A, it was a big fish. Yeah, you know. But but point taken. Yeah, exactly. Game of Thrones is way less enjoyable if someone believes it's true. <laughs> um, now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would. I would. Um, best worst. Most of the movie is really bad CGI walking. That's, <laughs> that's, all that's, all that's of the movie, the movie. It's like an hour of the movie. Yeah, exactly. And, all the movie's really bad CGI. Half of it is walking. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. we should point that out at the outset. This entire movie is a cutscene from a 1993 video game. Yep. Like just, <laughs> just after they started using video clips of people and just before they could make video games look good. That's the golden zone oh. Of animation Absolutely. we're dealing with here. The whole time, I'm just like pressing X. Like, go. Just can we not? I just want to play. I want to play the game. God. So, 
Um, I was going to go with best, worst, ha ha, I'm a douche. Right. The entire movie, this is all just a series of stories about Lord Ganesha. And at every story, Ganesh is a complete dickhead. And we're all <laughs> supposed to go like, T got him. And it's just yeah. like, no, I want someone <laughs> to decapitate you and replace your head with that of an elephant. I want what? that. Spoiler. spoiler. A little spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers for a very, very old religion. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I want to go with best worst. Well, how about if I throw this? Yeah. Oh, because Jesus. that is all the battles. <laughs> it's just people. Boy. All right. How about this? Okay. All right. How about this? My how turn. about this? And, okay. Well, that one worked. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too, right? Because like at, you throw in a, a weapon and the guy ducks. Right. And the weapon goes over his head. It doesn't matter what weapon that was. You, you know, right. Like you could be throwing a spear or an AK 47. It does. If he can duck under the weapon, it doesn't matter if you throw a different one. Yeah. Well, apparently it does. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah. No, clear, clearly, there clearly. Are unduckable light weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what the axe is made of. Yeah. yeah what about this antique cane? <laughs> well, it depends on how twisty it is. It depends. Well, there's a little brass knob. <laughs> You're going to be distracted. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to need a few minutes to figure out how one describes some of the shit we saw this week. So we're going to pause for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be diving headlong into all the homicidal fables that are Bal Ganesh. Naren, Naren. It's time for the great race. Yeah, race. Go Ganesh. Woo. All right. Ready, set, go. Yeah, go. Go Ganesh. What is this? You have walked around your parents. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck is that? Oh, you see, my mother and my father mean the world to me. Uh, bullshit, cheating, cheating, and that's nothing. Thus, and thus, I encircle them, which means I encircle the world. No, no, boo, boo, you know the rules, boo. Brother. You're going around the world. I have returned. Have you won the race? No, no, he fucking... Walked around your parents like an asshole. Nothing. Oh, do you not see your brother has already won? Poor shit. Doesn't count. I think we are both winners. You can all fuck yourself. This is bullshit. We must all Boo. learn to be... Boo. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And before we dive into this fever dream, we're going to open on a disclaimer that says... All right, guys, look, the stuff in this movie is true, but a few minor liberties may have been taken. Right. <laughs> and, and we should be very clear about this. This movie is not going to be like, look, this whole cutting off and the elephant head thing. That's us embellishing a bit. They are admitting that they embellished because Lord Ganesha, the elephant god, will have a mouse friend and do sweet, sweet extreme sports in the snow. Yeah, That's right. What the liberties <laughs> they're talking about. Are. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The other shit is real. But yeah, he didn't actually carve the half pipe on his mouse, guys. Right. So that would be this... silly. Some of this is the religious canon, and some of this is extra footage from Snow Dogs. You <laughs> make your choice. A little bit of the Cool Spot commercial, 7-Up. Yeah, there you go. And, okay, so we start off with this brutally, painfully happy theme music uh, to a poorly CGI'd mouse shaking its ass. Uh, by the way, Hey, can we make these mice dance sexier? Was absolutely <laughs> something someone said during this production several times. Like he was that guy by the end of this movie being made. Oh, God, yes, here we can the make the rats a little sexier. Okay, we bumped it up like three times now. This is <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I would say you're at a two. Really? A two, Jerry? What's a ten for you, man? Do you got ten in your desk? <laughs> if I open your computer, am I gonna see a ten? <laughs> No. And again, we've <laughs> got to emphasize how poorly done this is. It's like it's like a Nintendo 64 video game about rats, but you set the controller down for a while to go get a sandwich, and this is what he's doing when you come back, right? <laughs> so, and this goes on forever, by the way. This is like a 9-minute sexy mouse dancing fighting with the credits sequence. Yeah. They clearly thought that this mouse was like the thing that's after the acorns in Ice Age or whatever. They thought that that was, you know, this is what we're going to market afterwards, y'all. 
people are going to eat up sexy mouse dolls. Sexy yep. mouse dolls, exactly. <laughs> it's got very realistic holes. Re- relax, relax. <laughs> All right? We're going after two markets at once. You guys remember the end of Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas? Do you think we could? What if we just front load that shit? That was, I mean, that killed it. That was a great movie. And I, I should point out, we're not even through the credits. And I've written this. I'm like, my notes at this point are fucking insane. Imagine someone reading over these bullet points and trying to determine my sanity. These are the last three. A poorly CGI mouse is shaking its ass. It's a rat based video game where you set down the controller for a while. The credits and the sexy belly dancing mouse are fighting. <laughs> Even worse, imagine if you read these to your past self and you were like, oh, you want to know what you're going to do for a living? Here, here's three of the things that are your job in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so eventually that comes to an end and we get that same rat who is apparently going to be our narrator. We won't learn that until halfway through the goddamn story. Um, but he's trying to open a giant holy book. And it's too heavy, so we get some like slapstick. Mm-hmm. And then he he prays it open. Yeah. Using Hindu rat telekinesis. My notes don't get more sane as we go, y'all. Just a quick warning. There. <laughs> All right. So so we open the movie proper at the highest peak of the Himalayas. Um, and the narrator, as we cut in, is probably he, he might as well just go, You're probably wondering what the fuck is going on here. <laughs> But uh, this is apparently Shiva's extended family. They all live on Mount Everest. Ah, I have a uh, cow, Buddha, the fireball guy from Street Fighter, and a fat <laughs> orc are all talking to the Statue of Liberty's dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, or that, or that. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, Street Fighter was missing some characters. They should have got not, they, not just Dalsim. They should have done other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So. Here's where the story begins. One day, Lord Parvati asks Pink Cow Dude to keep all the pervs away while she's in the bath. Okay. This is absolutely a I'm jerking off thing, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, good. I just want to be clear. <laughs> there is no other reason someone's that worried about their own husband coming in on them in the bathtub. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So anthropomorphic cow is guarding when along comes a green Gaddy Anton. <laughs> This is the Statue of Liberty's dad. Yeah, Statue of Liberty's dad. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, wait, wait, what's the, what's the actual, he's Shiva, isn't he? That's Lord Shiv Shankar. Yeah, Shiva. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So he wants in, but the cow won't let him in. Cow's like, no, Parvati was very clear on this. And he's like, hey, come on, man. I'm her legal husband. Did, right. Does she have illegal husbands? <laughs> well, I, I didn't get what that meant. <laughs> I didn't like, know that the rule was. If you're someone's husband, you're allowed to watch them bathe uh, because <laughs> I plan to use that. For the amount of times I've had a sponge blown, thrown at me. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, how badly did you guys want for him to walk in and she's just taking the wettest, most painful shit? She's just like, oh, man, see, this is why I didn't want you to. Ah, we eat nothing but Indian food, dude. What did you think I was doing in here? I wanted that not at all, Eli. <laughs> Uh, also, circling back, which rights do you lose when you get married? Which which <laughs> rights does the wife not have anymore? How does it work? Um, well, this is India, so she never had any to begin okay, with. It's, so, it's yeah, about the same. It's yeah, exactly. Right, right. exactly. Okay. So the cow lets uh, Shiva through, and, and he comes through to the Conan's going to chop somebody's head off now theme <laughs> for some reason. Um, so she comes in. Er, he comes in. She's fully dressed standing near the bathtub. And she's like, oh, God damn that cow. <laughs> she's like, why didn't he stop you? And he's like, well, because I'm his boss. And she's like, oh, why didn't he stop you? And he's like, oh, all right. I don't know how much he's, further this he's conversation. He's a cow. You can't, okay. can't hold him to super high intellectual standards, you realize. <laughs> so, yeah. So and she's all pissed. You know, she's like, I wish there was somebody who would whip that husband of mine's ass. I bet if I made my own person, <laughs> she's going to make someone who listens to her the reason for motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> only only for first time moms. Um, so, yeah. So she bathes. And th- this is a very weird scene because she's fully dressed and bathing, but it's still 
super erotic until she starts shedding her skin like a molting butterfly? Oh, I That's think true. it continued to be quite erotic. <laughs> <laughs> she started it rubbing is, mustard on her arm very sensually, I thought. It's coming off in a crust pile? Yeah. Is yeah, that- okay, so if she was rubbing mustard on her arm, it's way less weird. I just thought she rubbed her arm until it turned orange and started shuffling off or whatever. Shuffling yeah, I mean, look, weird. I know being made out of a rib is bad, but... Being made out of eczema scabs might be worse. I don't know. <laughs> if you can make a little boy out of skin flakes, see a doctor. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So she lovingly crafts a child out of her discarded sunburn peel. And then she prays that Pinocchio could become a real boy. And well, that- you, have, you have to fuck the mustard doll. <laughs> she, she makes mustard, You fuck it to life. Yeah. And then we get the musical number. In fact, that I'm pretty sure was called. Fuck this mustard doll to life. <laughs> and that's what happens. Patreon goal. Guys, crazy billionaire money. I like really honestly, one of you is a crazy billionaire. Like statistically one of you speaking. Has to be, or will yeah. be, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So then she shoots a lightning ball into the mustard doll and sparkles him to life. And that's how babies are made, boys and girls. Uh, in particular, uh, fat baby Elvis. Yeah. Because that's what we're looking at now. <laughs> is that is the fat kid with a mullet an artistic choice or is that doctrine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Was Elvis trying to look like baby Ganesh? Yeah, pre, like, pre-elephant ooh, head. That's yeah. the good question. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So mom's super pleased with the work she did. And then baby Danny McBride goes to rock the fuck <laughs> out. Oh, like God. I, I, that's, no, the whole time, that's all I could fucking see. <laughs> Kenny Powers. I, was, I love it so Kenny much. Powers. He is so Kenny Powers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he goes off boardlessly snowboarding, you know, like in the scripture. To the sweetest tunes <laughs> you ever done imagine. If Vin Diesel had pulled up next to this kid and like tossed him a grenade and then he threw it at some ninjas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, we haven't talked about the music yet. It is insane. Oh, it's fantastic. It's it's like a band of like old Nintendo characters are are <laughs> are like literally they're using Mario Paint like a live action version of all the Mario Paint <laughs> instruments. Like that I wanted them to like pan over and we would see them doing that. <laughs> At this moment they're like in a garage trying to do Iron Man on Mario Paint. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so he's surfing around being awesome and shit, and he comes across those other gods from earlier, and they're plotting against him. They're like, ah, oh, fuck baby Danny McBride. He can go fuck himself. Um, and it, it, he responds to this by throwing a snowball at Cow Dude and then doing a Bugs Bunny trick to make him run into a tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he draws a train tunnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why are you running into the train tunnel? Why, does, why do people do that? Why does that ever work? I don't know. So, all right. So now that we've met him, it's time for mom to put her kid to the test. She says, all right, I'm going to take a long masturbation. I mean, bath again. Uh, <laughs> you don't let anyone in, period. <laughs> not even your dad. This is and the reason you are alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would have given anything to see the crazy shit this lady was doing in the bath. <laughs> like her and like 30 Elvis impersonators just going nuts. <laughs> So, okay, so, but wouldn't you know it, the same green Gaddy Anton shows up again, wants to come in. And I love this moment, too, because because uh, she was like, uh, I'm coming in. And the kid's like, no. And he's like, uh, who the fuck are you? And he's like, I'm her kid. He's like, then you're my kid. Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> yeah. It's always that awkward moment when you come home and meet your wife's eight-year-old son guarding the door. Yes. <laughs> Our southern listeners probably get it. But for no. us northerners, it's probably hard. <laughs> I just wanted this argument to be the rest of the movie at this point. Like, if the entire movie was just an hour and 45 minutes of them being like, okay, move. No, nope, can't. Like, that, it would have been more and more hilarious by accident. <laughs> yeah, and it would have been better than the movie that we got. So, but we live learn here that Shiv Shankar is not above kicking a fat kid's ass. Uh, um, I thought I was kidding when I wrote little boy and full grown man fight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were not, but before we get to that, we have to, because the cow steps in, right? The cow's like, let me talk some reason uh, into him. Hold on, Shiva, don't don't go crazy here. And the kid's like, cow, do something or fuck off. So we get the, like, because we'd already seen once where he, like, moved out of the cow's way, the cow fell, that was hilarious. So now we have a montage of that. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> with with sound effects unrelated to the action. Yeah, they're, right. just, they're just throwing in like the banana peel slipping sound effect, but there's no slipping going out. They're just like randomly putting in weird slide whistles. Yeah. 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 Right. Someone just bought the sound effects thing on iTunes and then pressed shuffle because <laughs> at one point it's like a chapter of an audio book is the result of someone. <laughs> just like, Mary stood over the summer snows. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the monkey house. So. <laughs> So Ganesh closes with the with the Bowser toss, right? He grabs the cow, swings him around, tosses him off to the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we cut to the jolly green person conspiring against that meddling kid. He's like, fuck, man, he kicked my cow's ass. Uh, now who's going to whip that infant's ass? I feel like this bath has really gotten out of control. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, during these action scenes, they made cuts as if the actors couldn't handle the stunts. Yes. It's a cartoon. Yes. I want to be clear. This is a cartoon. <laughs> but they had to, like, cut around stunt problems <laughs> is what it appeared to be happening. Yeah, or, the, no, we can't have him bend over if you're looking at the left. It doesn't, it, it looks really <laughs> bad. There's always sudden a, there's all of a sudden a leg sticking out of his butt. It's weird. It's weird. Um. So, yeah, so the, Shiva sends back the three other gods to all kick a child's ass. And, mm-hmm. by the way, this is the... Formidable army is how they were described. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just three dudes. <laughs> They're not looking great. And just to recap, Eli described them very. I had him as like an obese goblin, mm-hmm. uh, starving guy from a charity commercial. I guess that's that was Dalsim. <laughs> yeah, but he had about. spikes mm-hmm. in his head. Right, and the uh, gingers have souls kid in a sundress. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and we have to point out that even though there are only three of them. They mentioned that they're a formidable army, and so does the kid, like we wouldn't notice. The kid is like, why are there so many of you here to take on me? And I'm like, there's three. There's three. <laughs> we can see. I know that you didn't get to animate the rest of this movie, and then you already had the voice acting, but you just cut those lines. You just do the fights, movie. We don't, we can see. So, and, and then, and then he totally, this, we get this very long action sequence now where he's going to fight these three guys. He's going to go all Zack Snyder on their ass. Oh, I want Vin Diesel to remake this movie so badly. (laughs) Everyone constantly compliments Ganesh. He is supernatural and he looks like Vin Diesel already, especially later (laughs) in the movie. It's perfect. (laughs) No. Yeah, you're right. Um, So while this fight is happening, Three-headed Gandalf is meditating on a throne somewhere, and physically, and like psychically, notices the fight. Yeah, the, the three-headed king of the lawn gnomes does not like this one. <laughs> See, I had him happy. as three Santas, one body. Yeah, this. <laughs> and yeah, apparently, he thinks three-year-olds getting beat up is a bad thing. Um, so he teleports down to talk some sense into everybody. He's like, all right, well, the plot of this movie is terrible. I must intervene. (laughs) This isn't isn't going well. And we should point out how creepy this graphic is because only one of the heads emotes. So it looks like a dead conjoined triplet thing, right? (laughs) (laughs) Are you looking at the other two? Don't look at the other two. They're not part of this. Somebody should make that lawn gnome of, (laughs) of the dead or partially dead conjoined triplets. I think that'd be a good lawn gnome. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm I'm sure that that's a great tab on Pornhub. Um, so yeah, so he comes out, he tells tells the formidable army to go away, so they do, and then three headed Gandalf starts talking, trying to talk some sense into Ganesha, um, but <laughs> Ganesh is being a little douche because that's all he does. So he immediately gets in a fight with the kid. No one can talk to this child for more than thirty seconds without fighting him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, so this will be the first of many, like, I'm going to make more and more complex weapons appear and throw them at you. Fight. <laughs> yeah. We get uh, the Smoker's Oasis thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Baby rattle, yep. whatever. Uh, then an oversized wrench, then a walking <laughs> stick, an antique walking stick. That actually yep. happens. Yep. A wooden snake. It's like a carrot top routine. They're just like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. At this point, I just wrote in my notes, hey, mom, maybe you put a sign on the door or something so your kid doesn't have to fight several gods. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but he beats three-headed Gandalf with his trusty mop handle. Um, and apparently, 
this action scene is not over yet because now Jolly Green regular sized person shows up and he's like, all right, enough of this. You kick it everybody's ass. I am going to do a sexy Macarena death dance. Yep. He's doing his, he's doing the haka. Is that what it I, is? He's doing the haka. I, the, the rugby game thing? The New Zealand yeah, thing, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Weird calisthenics. He's angrily hopping to power up his trident, apparently. Um, and by the way, somebody's awful nephew clearly did these graphics. Oh yeah, they, they, like they made this entire movie to prevent like a sad situation, like possible suicide. They were like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. I want no, no, you can do it, Ricky. You can do it. Uh, you want? I I can make them walk differently. I have them walk. I see. I have them going right to left. I could have them go left to right if you want for forty five minutes. They can't bend over that way. I but go yeah. at a forty five degree angle. <laughs> Could you do a 60? No, don't be a dick. I mean, I could do a lot of angles. And while the green guy was dancing, I wanted so badly for Autumn from 21 Day Fix to jump in there, make him do another minute of it. He's just, uh, Autumn, I, think, I don't think this is good for him. No! Never quit. If you need to modify, follow Cat. F falls over. You see Cat marching to herself. Cat's my spirit animal. Where's Cat's movie? So, so then we head underwater. Naturally. Where, yeah, well, obviously. So, it, and Vishnu is there just innocently fucking with his fidget spinner when he senses a looming disaster. Mm. He says, uh oh, Shiva's doing the dance of death, which is, by the way, this is the first time we realized that goofy looking shit was the dance of death. Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Man, that, now, now we know that Hindus have the least intimidating apocalypse, right? Yeah, the right. stars falling out of the sky, but we're just going to see Shiva like. Uh, macarena, Macarena, Macarena. <laughs> Trust me, guys. <laughs> it's going to be real bad when I get oh, finished. Oh, shit. He's doing his cycle. Um, so, and yeah. <laughs> I have to point out this moment. He's like, oh, no, there's about to be a terrible thing. And and the his, his wife is like, oh, cool. Well, we'll go up there. We'll stop the dance of death. And then we can see my sister. Yeah. And she, <laughs> and she was like, Ooh, Ooh, do we have um... to see your sister? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, come on, just a quick lunch. I, she's just, uh, she's always <sighs> going through a thing. <laughs> Maybe we. Her husband's always doing death dances. It's weird. It's I gotta be honest. It's just weird. He always wants to hold my spinny thing. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that guy. It's just, it's just <laughs> nice to know that the Hindu gods have the same fights I do. Just like <laughs> ah, I would. Ugh, so busy. I don't know. <laughs> if we're gonna get in. Chance. Why don't you go to the lunch and I'll. Not. Got this bag of chips. There's been a clip on it for a while. What if, I mean, we should finish that. I'll bring that. And so, I won't go to lunch with her. So they go up to the top of the Himalayas just as Shiva decapitates Ganesha with his spear. Yes, we watch a child get decapitated in this cartoon. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, I mean, apparently children are full like potatoes because we see like the head, the 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 neck and the bottom of the head and everything, and it's just like skin across. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, also, don't you hate it? I mean, look, we've all been there. Don't you hate it? You have a fight with your wife, you kill your kid with a trident, and then she gets all <laughs> mad at you. <laughs> Everybody's ready to blame you. <laughs> Yeah, no, she comes out and gives everybody a very stern talking to about killing her child. It yeah. was her fault. Maybe if you weren't such a dick about fucking privacy during bath time, bath time, Barbie. <laughs> Put a lock on the door. Get a little hook in an eye. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Although, just do another mustard fucking ceremony. It took like five minutes. Just make another fucking voodoo doll kid and fuck it to life again. You seem to enjoy it. Whatever. <laughs> So, yeah, but she makes it very clear to all the gods that have gathered around to watch her kid get killed that she's going to kill herself unless they fix her headless child. Right. <laughs> and, and, and everybody's like, you can't, like, you can't fix this. My trident chopped off his head. That's my whole thing. My whole thing is if I cut your head off. It doesn't go. I mean, technically, that's all weapons things, but mine especially. <laughs> I was, I'm very insistent that there's no reuniting of the head and the body. <laughs> I was really hoping the rest of the movie would be about uh, headless fat baby Elvis. 
<laughs> like that would have been or, or oh, floating head fat baby oh, Elvis. Much better. Much or the better. two of them as buddy cops. <laughs> oh. Like there's so many things they, they didn't. No. I'll yes. get on your shoulders. No, this makes way more sense if I get on your shoulders. <laughs> so yeah, and and so they. You know, she says, fix my dead kid. And everybody's like, that's impossible. But then Vishnu's wife steps in and says, I don't know. It seems pretty reasonable to me. And I was like, God damn it. No, we got to fix that. Oh, God, you got to always take her side. This is why I don't want to see your sister. She gets <laughs> us involved in the drama. Now you've involved me. Now I'm here, a part of this. I'm in this fight now. These people are, I married you. These people are strangers. <laughs> and then we get this weird moment where everybody's like, hmm, how do we fix the head? Well, we could graft another kid's head onto his body that'd be john? i don't know that'd be a big huge hassle All though right. well john yeah Binet but that's really <laughs> <Ramsey>. <laughs> but yeah i mean that's the, the, that's what they realized they're like all right well we got to get a, a child's head then <laughs> so we what do we do we be, we behead a different child not using your trident and then <laughs> sew their then head we, onto the mustard baby yep 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 yep, yep. that's it but but now keep in mind, any old dead kid head won't do. The kid has to be facing north. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want any of them south facing schmurschmurs on his kid's body. Right. And yeah. the mom needs to not be paying attention. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. Now, I just want to go around India sneaking into houses and facing kids north and rolling moms over. <laughs> they wake up. Ah! Okay. Like, How the fuck? Who did? Who moved? Who moved us? <laughs> Are you his, his head's there? His head's still there. His head's there. yeah. So, so the formidable army of three gods goes off searching for a head, and I have to know what they chat about. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, all right, so where do we find a baby's head? What do you guys think? Well, let's let's walk into the woods until we see a baby. Same page, same page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. Absolutely. Absolutely. The kids over in Darbanga have huge heads. We don't want a huge head. We just want a normal size head. Okay, so I don't want to be this guy, but I would like to not cut off the kid's head. Is that okay? <laughs> I feel like I'll we should figure out guard. who's going to do that now. I'll make sure mom's face in the wrong no, way. You're a new guy. You do you do Christmas Eve. You no. cut the heads off. No, I don't. No, I'm not comfortable with that. And, no. and look, I mean, I'm embarrassed to admit this because this is the story of Ganesh and I should have known this was coming. But when they walk into the woods, they're like, hmm, a deer head? No. Monkey head? Oh, look, an elephant. I'm like, a fucking elephant? Of course it's an elephant. It's Ganesh. But yes, <laughs> they find, all they can find is an elephant. So they behead a baby elephant and come back with that. <laughs> Which... That's a weird part, untold part of this story, right? Where the mom elephant wakes up and is just like, ah! 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 <laughs> well, at the risk of having to write a different um, uh, different breakfast club close this week, I figured maybe they sewed the little Danny McBride head onto the elephant. <gasps> and that's the untold part of the story. Oh. Right? <laughs> Danny McBride's not doing much. He, he would probably do that. Come on, guys. Crazy billionaire. Money. <laughs> yes. Vin Diesel plays the Ganesh, but then Danny McBride <laughs> is his elephant. Danny McBride headed talking sidekick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's better than the star and the star got made. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that at Christmas with my family. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I wanted them to keep getting all set to chop off the elephant head, but then the mom rolls over and right. in sleep, and they're like, "Fuck, so close! Uh, God damn it! This is ridiculous. We've had so many good ones. Now I got to go then, back to the beginning of the fucking level, find an <laughs> elephant to be." <sighs> the rest of the movie's them just spinning a baby elephant. <laughs> That's right. right. He's, he's kind of north northeast now. He's kind of <laughs> dude. Stop being a dick. Um. So yeah. So they they come back with the elephant head. They're like, okay, so how does this work? They just set it here, and then you'll throw a little magic lightning ball out of your hand. It's like, yeah, no, that's pretty much that's yeah, pretty that's much it. it. Just snap it on like a Lego man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and then he comes back to life, and this is creepy as ever, loving fuck. Yep. <laughs> and I wanted the dad to be like, don't worry, son. The Chicks are gonna really like the trunk thing. I don't. I, I'll get into it. You're like six or seven <laughs> right now, but just trust me that Dad did you a favor by cutting yeah. your head off. <laughs> but uh, army, 
Army guys, just real quick. Whenever I ask you for a for you to chop off a body part from now on, I'm going to mean human unless I say <laughs> I, like Just a quick note. If I mean of any animal, I'll specify, God damn it. Otherwise human, though. Just assume human. We're human. Well, you're a cow, so I get but, you were the human, but the rest of us are people. So. So, and you didn't get a cow, so I feel like your excuse isn't, uh, I don't feel like that works anyway. So, okay. So now we have Ganesh. Well, that we have to do the whole bit where like everybody's like, but you know the kids are going to make fun of him for having an elephant head, and everybody's like, no, 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 we'll go in a in a circle blessing him and telling him how awesome he is, like a Vin Diesel movie, and then no one will make fun of him. Yeah, I wanted one of the gods to just be like, atheists will have a million statues of him in their home because their wife likes elephants, and people will be like, are you guys Hindu? And will be like, no, she likes elephants, and they'll be like, is there a non-god statue of an elephant? And then everyone will get really awkward and quiet because that's what you do for a living now. <laughs> so, okay, so then we cut to Ganesha getting extreme with his rat buddy. His buddy is a, a rat in a basketball jersey, obviously. <laughs> Half pipe in a ravine. Did Jesus half pipe a ravine, Noah? No. That's yeah. why this religion is better. Yep. Here, here's, a, here's a note I have. Elephant face baby riding a rat like a toboggan through the snow. Yep. Hinduism has the best sentences. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it does. So, yeah, we get a whole montage of them being extreme and awesome and, yeah, triple Xing it up. And uh, and then they go home to get something to eat, him and the rat. Uh, because we have to establish that this kid is a fat ass, greedy, gluttonous bastard. Yeah, this made me very uncomfortable. The rest of this movie basically was me slowly becoming more and more suspicious that Heath is Balganesh. <laughs> 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 Because the rest of this movie, after decapitation, <laughs> will be about a child's search for coconut-flavored dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't like coconut. So yes. Stupid, stupid comparison. So. But yeah, and this is the first of many times where, like, he talks his mom. You know, he's like, hey, mom, can I have something to eat? And she's like, yeah, here's some fruit. And he's like, fuck fruit. I want dumplings. She's like, okay, here's a few dumplings. He's like, I want more dumplings. And she's like, here's more dumplings. I want some for my mouse, too. Here's some for your mouse. And then he takes the mouse's dumplings. And I'm like, how am I rooting for this kid? <laughs> He's like fucking Cartman with cheesy poofs for the yes, rest of the movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then he gives the rat uh, a lecture about get being too fat. Yeah. He's like, yeah, maybe you don't want to, you know, cut down on the carbs because, you know, you're going to get lazy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Fat baby Elvis elephant. You're going to give me a lecture about the car. It's like me giving a lecture about like anything related to health. <laughs> you know, no, Heath, you're doing great. Looks like you lost some weight recently. I did. Thank you, guys. So, Who said that? One of you said, one of you said, good job. You lost a little bit of weight recently. <laughs> Well, I so, forget who it was. So, <laughs> it's on. It's on the record, though. Yeah, we'll, that, we'll, definitely we'll, catch, we'll go back it and figure out. Happened. Somebody said that. Yeah, it's so, exciting to catch some some Japanese speed trains with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't well, worry. we obviously he need like, more room in here. <laughs> they go. They go normal speed when they're in the station. You're you're lucky. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So he heads outside. He gets some some dumplings. He heads outside and he hears the bad gods plotting. I believe to keep him safe, right? Like the snippet of conversation is well is like, well, we have to make sure that nobody ever harms Lord Ganesha. So he's like, ah, I'm gonna fuck with these guys. Yeah. And the way that he chooses to do that is he's like, hey, cow guy, I have a riddle, but if you can't answer it. <laughs> You got to give me a, a joy ride, which, by the way, is my new way to propose sex. By the way, I have a well, riddle. If you can't answer it, you have to give me a joy ride. It's even worse. He says, you have to let me mount you and give me a joy ride. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, this he's, he clearly, if you get this question wrong, Lord Ganesh is going to fuck you, cow. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> and his question is, it, it, this is, first of all, this is some really dumb shit, right? Like, you know, like you know asking if you can't answer my question you have to, like what number am i thinking of you know come on um but his question is uh how many hairs are there on my pet rat and i'm like that's not a fucking riddle that's just that's just a stupid goddamn question um and the cow's like i don't know and he's like i do it's 10 million thousand billion hairs and he's like i don't believe you he's like well then you have to count them and he's like fuck i am wrong i'm like nope that's not how wrong <laughs> that's not how and there's definitely not 
And there's definitely not 10 billion hairs on this thing. No, no. Absolutely. Yeah, right, right, exactly. 10,000 million, first of all. Just say 10 billion. Don't be an asshole. Right, That's weird. Right. But <laughs> nope, also wrong. There's not, there's not 10 billion hairs on I a think, rat. I think in India they go with that uh, weird UK system of a billion being a million million or something like that. So they, a thousand that, million? Y- y- they don't have a billion? They don't have no, they do billion? have a billion, but it's a million million is a billion in, in UK. Right oh, it's so. it's not a thousand million? No, no. It's, it's, they, just, they just, yeah, yeah, exactly. We should We should stop letting them use our language. The, the English. You don't get numbers if you don't. What? <laughs> <laughs> this will be a feud for you to start with up, uh, but... Marsh on Facebook. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, so but but cow god can't get it right, so he gets to ride cow god around. And at this point, I'm like, you know, I'm retroactively enjoying this kid getting beheaded now. <laughs> he's a dick. <laughs> but luckily, one of the guys comes out and he's like, "Hey, maybe you stop torturing us. Uh, there's more dumplings inside, and we know you." You love dumplings. Yeah. <laughs> so they head off in search of dumplings, and I write in my notes, what the fuck is this movie about? <laughs> I think it's about people being mean and distracting people with dumplings, and that's, you know, <laughs> that's not funny. It's just, you know, people like those sometimes. <laughs> so, and he sneaks into the house, and I completely expected for him to catch his parents fucking. He's like, ooh, or the dumpling. Oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> This Make a is why you kid. didn't want me coming in to the <laughs> bath. God damn it. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. off her. What are you gonna what are you gonna do that mustard? Don't worry, just <laughs> let's turn back around. Because I like mustard. At this point, I just wrote in my notes, one hour left of this movie, guys. How much of it do you think is gonna be dumpling based? <laughs> <laughs> also, also, did baby Jesus get up to dumpling hijinks? No. Hinduism. Better religion. <laughs> Throwing it out there. <laughs> So, yeah, so they go off in search of the dumplings. They find them, but they're too high up. Ganesha can't get to him, so they, he has to get on one of the other god's shoulders. And they, they form a giant stack. Like, yes, they might as well put on a goddamn trench coat at this point, but he can't quite get to him, and he accidentally knocks him down. And Mom hears the dumpling platter a rattle and has to come in and find out what happened. Oh, if yeah. she cut his head off with a trident, it would be so ironic. <laughs> Dad comes home, and she's just like, okay, this one's on me. This one's on me. <laughs> you are going to laugh, actually. You know how I made a big deal? Remember when you did the thing with the trident? Okay. Maybe we find a human head this time. You, I used a different trident. Same same, <laughs> same weapon type, though. You got to admit, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, Ganesha is a douche nozzle, so he blames the rat. Yeah. Right? This, this loyal rat that lets him ride on his fucking back, despite him being way overweight for a toddler. And he's like, no, nah, it, it was the rat. You see, he climbed up the fucking thing and knocked it. He's a, he's a dick. This rat. We should kill Snitch. him. Huh? Snitch. <laughs> Chop his head off. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of that little vignette. There was a point to that story. And, yeah. So now we cut to a 27-minute dance number. Yeah. Well, this is another sad nephew being like, I can make the rat dance, too. If you want. I can make, like, five other rats dance, too. Yeah, but only five. Could you make them, like, dance all different? Well, no. No. <laughs> the same. They dance the same. I mean, why would they not want... You wouldn't want them dancing in unison? This, this music number could not be more random or long. Oh like, every God. moment you think it's over, you're like, okay, cool, little Bollywood dance. All right, there's a, oh, nope, still going. There's another mouse is here. Oh, right. <laughs> another formation. It is insanely, lo- don't get me wrong, it's way more enjoyable than nine tenths of the Christian movies. <laughs> you're right, watch. yeah. <laughs> well, there is a mouse shaking his ass, and we can't overstate how much, how rump based this rat dance is. Oh, it's all yeah. in the ass. It is very sensual. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, the entire cast of Step Up to the Streets runs in. All right. Oh, my God. This is going to take some, This is slow. This is a long thing. So, yeah. So, Mom comes out. She's pissed about all the music and the dancing. She kicks the mouse in the face, um, which is literally what happens. Uh, and then she tells, she explains to him that he needs to quiet it down with all these drums and dancing. Her, his dad can't even hear himself meditate. Right. And, you know, seeing as the last time you pissed him off, he cut off your head. Maybe chill. Yeah. yeah right. I'm just saying. 
So, okay, so now another god comes along and he's like, hey, I need to go into the castle. And Ganesh is like, no, my dad's meditating. You can't go into the castle or dance or play drums or any fucking thing. And he's like, you want to fight about it? And he's like, of course I do. That's what this movie is about. <laughs> yeah, the central theme of Hinduism, I'm pretty sure, after watching this movie, is conjuring up random objects and, and throwing them in, at in, children. in, in a turn-based duel. <laughs> Yeah, that, exactly. That's Hinduism in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't catch this. Par Parshurbam, I think, was this guy. Anyway, yeah, whoever he is, yeah, he starts throwing weapons at Ganesha. Ganesha starts throwing weapons at him. I'm like, I feel like we've been through this. But finally, the, the Par Parshurbam, whoever it is, he's like, all right, you dodged my spear. You dodged my five glowing snakes. But what about this crazy, cool golden axe? <laughs> apparently not apparently he nope. can't avoid that one nope <laughs> gets smacked in the face yeah and, and then and then <laughs> jolly green giant god comes out and he's like oh dude did you hit my kid in the face with an axe and it's like are you really yelling at him for attacking a child <laughs> because you cut his head off like two seconds ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah at least all he did was break a fucking tusk man come on <laughs> um and by the way that's how he got his nickname, Indian word. <laughs> Igmug. And I could tell that the people watching this who speak that language are supposed to be like, ha, 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 ha. But it was just like, and that's how he got the nickname, Ignug. And I was like, oh, got okay. It. <laughs> yeah, that must have been. You're I would, if, yeah, I would have guessed it would have been something so, like a golden axe being thrown at him <laughs> by a fucking barbarian. So, so I felt that my... Uh, I got punched in ninth grade for making fun of a guy's girlfriend. So, yeah, I get it. Ignore. <laughs> well, Ignore. obviously, that's an important story with a point to it or something. So while we reflect on that, we're going to take a quick break. First, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. What was in that shit, y'all? Am I talking really loud or does it just sound that way? And does my breath look funny to you guys? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the unexpectedly epic conclusion of Bal Ganesh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, uh. Oh boy. Oh man. Uh, hey, hey, Carl. What's up, buddy? Uh, hey, Heath. Just stretching out my back. My sister Edna's visiting, so I'm stuck on the sofa, and my back is killing me. Edna? You rang. Oh, Carl, who's this? I like him tall. Edna, this is Heath. Heath, and this is my sister Edna. Hi, Edna. A pleasure. Care for a Toblerone? No, I'm good. Thanks, though. Mm, more for me. Yeah, uh, well, I was just saying, Carl, uh, why don't you try a Casper mattress for your back? What's a Casper mattress? Like the ghost? Met him at a party once. Real sleazeball. He might have died as a child, but he's a nasty old man now, let me tell you. And no, please, you're embarrassing me. Oh, don't be such a funny duddy. No, the Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. Product design features a marriage between foam layers for ideal firmness, just the right sink, and just the right bounce. Don't talk to me about marriage. Puts an end to sink and bounce, if you know what I mean. But Heath, I can't afford a new mattress. Uh, with Casper, though, I think you can. They have an affordable price because Casper sells direct to customers. Plus, you get free shipping and returns to anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. You even get a 100-night free trial with free, no-hassle returns if you're not happy. If only that author existed for my first husband. My first husband was a dragon. Emotionally. And literally. So, this mattress, it's good? Yep. I actually replaced my own mattress with a Casper mattress. The unboxing was a breeze, and I've never slept better. But don't take my word for it. With over 20,000 reviews and an average of 4.8 stars, it's quickly becoming the Internet's favorite mattress. Based on Casper, Amazon, and Google reviews. What was that? It's in the copy. I see. Yeah, so you can get $50 towards any mattress by visiting casper.com slash awful and using the promo code awful at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. What are you doing, Edna? Send the copy. I'm helping you tall, handsome friend. Yeah, so again, $50 toward any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash awful and using the promo code awful at checkout. All right. Now, why don't we get out of here and get a drink, you big lug? Do you drink? Water. I'm one-third pug. Sure. Sure. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and one time, me and my buddy Steve were hanging out in front of a Seven Eleven. Hey guys, and I. Uh, wait, wait, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're writing a holy book. Yeah, for kids. Yeah, for kids. And and he says we should get an adult to buy us beer. And I'm uh, like, so, I don't sorry, know, guys. Right? Why? Oh, because we wanted beer. We wanted yeah. beer. No, to, no, to I, drink no. It, like, why? Why are you writing a holy book for kids of just boring shit you did as a teenager? Oh, well, yeah. I, w- we, what with this week's movie, you know. Oh, yeah. No, no. I guess. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So I say, who do we know who will buy us beer? And that's how the Susquehanna River got made. What? It's perfect. Love it. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> Good things. And we're back for more of this shit. And just in case we were in danger of not weirding the fuck out, narrator rat is going to pop up at this point and basically say, <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Bear with me a little longer here. <laughs> okay. That was only like 52 minutes. You want to <laughs> hear another story? I'm the narration rat, by the way. I don't know if you heard what's going hello. on. And welcome hello. to Hinduism. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, he's like, did I ever tell you about that time Ganesha made the river s- such and such? Um, let me tell you that story. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? You've been so good so far. So once upon a time, there was a demon named something long and weird. And he was like, like all the demons in Hinduism, apparently he was just a vaguely ethnic dude Mm -hmm. um, with fangs. Fangs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fangs. Fangs. And he was meditating so hardcore that he didn't even notice that tarantula crawling into his asshole that they show at the beginning of it. Dude, that for me was the hardest part of meditation was the fucking bugs. Like seriously, in, yes. in Hawaii, I did a bit of meditation with the, some Zen guys and there were, they had these fucking armored centipedes. They were enormous. Ugh. They were terrible. They could send you to the hospital with a sting, like anaphylactic Ugh. shock. They were enormous, like bright colored arm. It was terrifying. Oh, yeah, man. but it was worth it for all the good sitting still. So because <laughs> because one of the values of meditating, as we've learned from our previous Hindu experiences, if you meditate well enough, you get one wish from a genie. It's true. <laughs> a god will come down and be like, hey, man, sweet meditation. Get what you do you anything? want? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, but this particular demon wants to be invincible. Yeah, and he really hits that W hard several times. He's like, I want to be invincible. Ah, now I am invincible. I will be invincible for it. And he wanted one guy to just pop in. I'm so sorry. It's the Vince, Vincible. Vince. Well, see, but I wanted it to go the other way. I wanted it to be like, I wanted Shiva to be super pedantic about it and say, no, no, everybody can punch right at you. You will never wince. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been useful going to my shit kick in high school, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, we've seen this go wrong before. Also, kind of a weak choice. Invincibility is pretty good, but yeah. you get to pick anything, like any power, like flying, mind control, time manipulation. Like you, I'm picking something else. So now Invincible Demon is like, ah, even I can take out even the gods now. So he shows up at some god thing or something and starts smashing shit, attacks the gods, takes him prisoner. <laughs> it's such a Indra. weird moment, too. He just shows up and he's got the big axe and he's just like, fuck up your bench. <laughs> fuck up your other bench. Oh, man. Okay, you have way more benches than I was <laughs> expecting. This seems less impactful now. Like, I was going to do a whole thing, but it's just benches. There's like nine benches in this room, guy. <laughs> wow, it's a lot of bench. Okay, I'll tell you what. Bring me something that isn't a bench and then I'll go back to the benches. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to throw out there again that this is the like eight millionth time across two movies we've seen Indra, the god Indra, get the shit kicked out of him and be useless. Are we yeah. sure Indra's a god? Because so far, like <laughs> everyone who can sit still and think quietly for 45 minutes has immediately gone and punched him in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not worth naming a country after now. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, by the way, the demon has, I shit you not, a two-eyed, one-horn, flying purple people eater as a sidekick. <laughs> he does. He does. That's real. That's real. All right. So, yeah, but one god. So, it's, uh, also, the demon can breathe fire and fly, and he's a giant. Yeah. 
Lord Shiva thinks invincible means a lot of stuff. <laughs> or maybe invincible means also well, fire oh, breathing. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I didn't think about that. I don't know. So, okay. So he captures all the gods but one. Now, this is weird because from this point on, the whole story will be about gods that aren't captured. Right? Like from this point on in the movie, we will be interacting with a bunch of gods, none of whom are captured. But at this point, they say he's captured all the gods except for one who's hiding in the southern mountains somewhere. Yeah, I had a feeling that this was sort of a grandma thing that after this story kind of sort of ends, we forget about demon guy like grandma telling a story. You know what I'm saying? Just sort of like, yeah, and, and then, then remember him at the end. Right. And then the grandma, like she realizes and nobody wants to talk about it because that means she has to move out of her apartment. So we're just like, oh, yeah, grandma. I remember all coming together. We don't uh, want you living here, knives, so yeah. Huh? We're not eating steak. Let's take all the sharp stuff out of the end. You know what you need? Nice carpet. Soft, soft carpet. Everywhere. Walls. On the walls. <laughs> so yeah, so so demon guy is really pissed off that there's this one god hiding from him in the south. So he goes to the rain god and he says, hey man, suck up all the clouds. No more rain in the south. Until that asshole shows up and, and turns himself in. So Rain God's like, yeah, all right. Well, I guess he told me to do it. I, I'm kind of a pussy. Well, yeah, so yeah, exactly. He he does it. Yeah. And and it causes a drought all in all of India. Yeah. Because of it. Mm -hmm. I wanted Jesus to fly over and be like, hey, you know what? This is perfect. Um, people were being super gay in like Florida and Texas. <laughs> you you want to spit Did those you, clouds back out? <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm doing you're you're doing a drought thing. I'm doing a storm thing. <laughs> This Just works out really gay. well. In I am just Southern having a United crazy States. week. So if you could <laughs> do me this, uh, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> yes. So there's drought all over Southern India. Uh, and this is where we meet, meet Sage Augustius. Seems like an odd name for an Indian sage, but okay. Right? It was a weird transit. <laughs> this movie takes a lot of right turns. It was like, and here we have Saint Steve. How you doing? <laughs> Steve. Uh, he's here to pray to Brahma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he shows up. Uh, he does some prayers and some sacrifices, and three headed Gandalf appears, and he's like, "Oh yeah, no, you meditated the fuck out of that, man. What would you like?" <laughs> uh, question: Does he sacrifice miso soup to Brahma? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he sacrifices miso soup to Brahma. It, that's certainly what I got. <laughs> And also, by the way, here's what an idiot, they, they go on and on about how Sage Augustus knows all things. This is what an idiot Saint, uh, Sage Augustus is. The God shows up. He's like, yeah, you, you meditated right. You can have anything you want. And he's like, I'm just curious why it isn't raining. I wanted, the, if I wanted three headed Gandalf to explain high pressure systems to him and shit and then leave. <laughs> but no, he says, no, you have to go to the South and see the cloud sucker God. I wanted him so badly to be like, what do you want? And he'd be like, oh, I want a new shirt. No, I want rain, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> want a soda? No, the fuck, just rain. Just rain. <laughs> well, obviously, what are you talking about? Although I would take a, also a soda. Also a soda. I mean, if you have one, I'm not saying no, 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 super no, thirsty. Don't, don't not give me a soda, but rain. <laughs> so meanwhile, Ganesha and his mouse are up to their usual shenanigans. Uh, the mouse sees a flower and is for some reason aroused. We will, this will not be explained, but the mouse is just creaming himself over this pink flower. He's going to fuck the shit <laughs> out of this flower. And I get it. That was a sexy flower. <laughs> it was an attractive flower. <laughs> I am not allowed in that florist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but of course, Ganesh is a dick. So he has to kill the flower that the uh, mouse was all excited about. Yeah, he slides down and smashes into it and fucks it. The, the the rat's actually mad. He's like, you always do this. You, I'm about to put my dick in a flower and you come barging in. You always ruin everything. You're the worst. <laughs> well, the mouse does that ultimate not cool kid getting picked on thing. He goes, when I get wet, I get a cold. And I'm just yeah, like, right. oh, <laughs> I am with you, mouse. You and I went to temple together. <laughs> K through eight. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's going to be reinforced so much in the next couple of scenes as well. <laughs> So Saint Augustus uh, happens by, or Sage Augustus rather, happens by while the the uh, two of them are fucking around, and Ganesh is like, "Hey man, he's headed to South India. Maybe we should sneak around behind him." And the mouse goes like, "I don't know, man. It's sixteen hundred miles of mountainous terrain. I would get tired." 
No, no, let's follow that guy around drought-stricken India. It'll be fucking fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be idea. awesome. Right after that, we'll start an atheist blog in Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> I have really good ideas out here in this jungle. Also, by the way, so like Ganesh is like, oh, you're just being lazy, rat. Come on, let's walk the 1600 miles. And then he gets on the rat's back and they fly. And yeah. I'm like, well, of course, it's easy for you. You're not the one flying, you douche. <laughs> yeah. Also, by the way, when they're out here in this jungle, I really wanted them to run into a mom elephant just dragging around her beheaded baby's oh, dead body. <laughs> just like, ooh, awkward. This Wearing a super... veil. I'm sorry, you look so familiar. Yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah, I have one of those like elephant faces. All right, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. So, <laughs> but unfortunately, no. Instead, they just follow, they sneak follow Sage Augustia for a little while. This is racist, by the way. Not everybody who has an elephant head on a baby looks the same <laughs> or different people. <laughs> You're a racist, <laughs> elephant mom. I also want to point out how Sage Augustia uh, prepared for his journey to drought stricken southern India. He brought a camel back. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's carrying this tiny, tiny little bucket full of like four cups of water. Yeah. Everywhere he goes, there are skeletons in the desert that have died of thirst. And he's like, no, it's no, it's good. I basically I have basically got a court. Right. He gets to the top of this hill and it looks like he. I know this isn't what the movie's supposed to be, but it looks like he remembers he's going to need more than a quart of water. And he's just like, <laughs> uh, I don't want to go all the uh, way back uh, to the mountain. <laughs> That guy's going to ask me to sacrifice some more miso soup to him. And <laughs> honestly, I only got the miso soup because I got the lunch special. So, <laughs> But uh, so he, he sits down. He's like, oh, I'm never going to make it in time. Um, and Ganesh is like, oh, this is going to take forever. I have a brilliant idea on how to make this quicker. I will turn myself into a bird, which, first of all, odd. if you had that power the whole time, you've been working way harder than you had to at the sneaking shit. But I will turn myself <laughs> exactly. into a bird and knock over his water. <laughs> yep. So he does that. He turns into a bird and flies. First of all, when he started flying, I wanted him to have a giant elephant head and just immediately crash back. <laughs> oh, damn. Just I didn't flapping desperately this. trying to drag a head along the floor. <laughs> no, I'm a bird. I am a bird. Stop. You guys stop. Ow. <laughs> he no and he knocks over the water and Augustus is like, oh, fucking bird. And he's like, no, no, no. Look, see, it's a river now. Yeah, well, he immediately turns back into Ganesha, which really makes you wonder why the fuck he needed to be a bird to dip that over. He could have just came over and said, hey, I'm going to turn this into a river, dude. Um, but, he, but he had to be a dick about it, apparently. That's just his M.O. I had, I had this whole skit worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I forget why I was the bird elephant. <laughs> now, now it feels dumb that I could have just come over and been like, would you like me to turn that into a river? But I, I, it was a pun. It was, oh, you were supposed to say I was foul. You're supposed to say, was, <laughs> that, but that I would have you, that would have supposed to be you. Um, so <laughs> you was, so let's do a run. We're gonna run it one more time. Put well, the water back. Put the, back. Put the water back. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. By spilling the water out as a bird, he created a giant river, and that's how he created a giant river. <laughs> so yep. that's the moral of that story. And he says, the Kaveri River will bring prosperity to everyone near it forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, nope. Nope. <laughs> everyone in southern India is not crushing it right now <laughs> because of being next to the Kaveri River. Like, it no. seems to think. They're just not As close enough. Out. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. No, oh, you the people right next. Yeah, <laughs> you actually you actually have to dangle your feet in the water. Of course, they'll dissolve while they're in there. It's quite polluted, but uh, you have to. Da yeah. Um. So okay. So with that out of the way, we head back to the temple. Um. For a a different story. Apparently, Ganesha has good news. He's gonna have a baby brother, and he's got some candy that's just for him. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's Those the weird thing. He's like, I have a baby brother. And the other gods are like, oh, so you're giving out candy? That's it. And he's like, no, you can all fuck yourself. This is for me. Yeah. Buy candy. <laughs> he's seriously Hindu Cartman. He's yeah. just like, yeah. Kyle's candy feels so good on my skin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So we cut to the mouse telling us how much he loved his little brother. Of course, they did squabble now and again. Because Ganesha liked to hang out and read scripture, but his brother wanted to play sports and fuck girls. <laughs> yeah. 
I really wanted to flash forward here. Just like 20 years later, Ganesh is rich and happy and little brother lives in his garage. <laughs> Still drinks with his high school football team. <laughs> Once scored four touchdowns in a single <laughs> game. And let me tell you something, my little brother, my big brother, you always take scare of me. Yes. So I'm smart. <laughs> I'm smart like you. <laughs> He said, he said I, I used to work for him, but I, I was inappropriate with some of the ladies. I don't know. Everything, everything's so PC these days. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go work out on this weird bench press I bought in the one month I had money. But that's it. All right. So now we cut to Ganesh. Ganesh is on a bench swing. Swing him! Oh no, he the knows that guy. <laughs> so many people. In the fucking garage with just that one little bench. <laughs> the one bench and the the two weights, the two forty fives and the two twenty that come with it, the two twenty fives, the two tens, and the two fives, and that's all they're ever bench pressing in their life forever. <laughs> that's it. I got some Google stocks, some Alibaba. <laughs> yeah, well, my portfolio, I got a 45 and a <laughs> 25. Yep, and a 25. <laughs> and a 10. Those, yes. are my, <laughs> those are my liquid assets so, in life. So now we got to Ganesh. He's on a bench swing. He's eating more candy. Um, and his mouse would really like some of his mountainous sweets, but fuck him. He's a dick. Ugh, fuck him. Sh share with your mouse friend, Ganesh. This is why people murder you. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so his brother shows up flying on a little peacock, and he's like, hey, brother, let's go out for a swim. And Ganesh is like, I don't know. I'm being fat and lazy at the moment, and that's working out really well. So <laughs> should we? Uh, also, uh, you, you want to address the elephant face thing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, never mind. No, not there yet. No, not there no, yet. yeah, no. Maybe dad will cool. cut your head off, too, eventually, <laughs> and you will also look different. <laughs> <laughs> So, but they get into an argument about who's more powerful here at this point. Like, so he's like, you know, well, you always just sit around eating candy all day and you're fat and I exercise all day and I'm not. And Ganesh is like, oh man, fuck you. I could beat you in a race. And then the Narayan guy shows up. Yeah. <laughs> Narayan, Narayan. And it's like, hey, you guys should, you should have a race. Yeah. Yeah. You should both. <laughs> Encircle the world three times, and whoever finishes first is the winner and is the most powerful. And they're like, "Yeah, okay, okay, that's not bad." We're, but were you just standing there this whole time watching, <laughs> watching us eat? What? That seems... Where were you just now this whole time? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Now, now, Ryan, now, Ryan. <laughs> no, yes, laser tag. What? <laughs> So mom and dad, so the brothers agree to do this. Mom and dad and all the other gods gather to see them off for their thrice trans-global foot race. Um, and, and I should point out, again, they start this race. Ganesh is on his mouth. His brother's on his peacock. They're not doing the fucking work, right? Yeah. <laughs> but so they, they hit the starting gun. Both of them go to take off. But Ganesh doesn't even leave. He lets his brother get ahead of him. He stops. And then he just walks around his parents three times Ugh. because... His parents mean the world to him. So if he encircles them, he encircles the world. Get it? So stupid. It? The worst. The also, worst. By the way, I'm pretty sure he only did two laps. He was supposed to do three. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> did the cartoon get tired? <laughs> was, was one of the laps a bad take? Like, what the fucking, fuck happened? Fucking Ganesh the Millennials. Fucking participation trophy asshole. You know what he meant by three times around the world, dick? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm so that, like it's all about good sportsmanship, right, Mom? No, fuck you. This does, this does not. Care. People need to lose at stuff. Yes, me and Eli spent an entire car ride a yelling car. in agreement about this the other day. People have There's, to lose. Yeah, and this Ganesh is the beginning of the problem. Next thing I know, Ganesh is going to tell me about how only four people showed up to see his band, but it's great because they had a fantastic set. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Ganesh. <laughs> Go, go do something that matters. Put work in a soup kitchen, you piece of shit, Ganesh. <laughs> Stop telling me how many fucking spoons you have. <laughs> so, yeah, so he walks around the parents. Just Ganesh and then... taking a self-care day. What did you do that you need self-care? I'm just having a hard time. Why? Stop. Stop. <laughs> do better. 
<laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was feeling. I thought my inbox felt a little empty. So, so Narayan is like, "Yeah, no, that totally. You walked around your parents. That that totally counts. You, um, everybody so, wins. Yeah, well, right. And that's and then the brother shows up and he's like, "Hey, I just finished going around the world three times. Wait a minute, what the fuck here? What happened? He's wearing the the hula thing, and I did. I feel like I won." He's like, no, no, it's, it's, um, yeah, he won. Yeah. He's like, was it some kind of trick? He's like, no, it wasn't a, tr- yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it was a trick. We, it was a trick. We, we both get burgundy ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. No, Fuck somebody you. gets a blue ribbon, somebody got a gold, everybody else lost. There's it's winners everybody. and losers in the Loser. fucking world. And then those losers try harder. That's the That's- point. They try and they become <laughs> nervous wrecks, but they're effective nervous wrecks. That's the point. They're good. They're better nervous wrecks. It's not about whether or not you're happy. It's about if it all turns out okay for everybody. So, we need to get rid sad. of welfare and tax rich people less is what we're saying. Yeah. 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 You know what? Wait, you know what, what helps? <laughs> <laughs> You know what helps in a situation like this is a mouse in a stocking cap bursting through ice like a rising zombie. So that's what happens next. <laughs> that did help. That did help. Yeah, right, right. No, exactly. Took your mind off of what you were thinking about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he's sure to tell us about the time Ganesh got in a fight with the moon. <laughs> yes. Yes, the drunken mouse just sloshes up to us and goes, I'll tell you about the time my boy Ganesh beat up the moon. True story. True story. One night. He was riding me like a skateboard. He did, he did a lot of that back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I want the rest of this episode to be. <laughs> Drunk Mouse Noah is a character now. <laughs> so he's riding along on his mouse one night under a full moon and a snake comes out and trips the mouse by accident. They wipe out. And the moon turns into a human and starts laughing at him. Ha ha, fat elephant kid fell down. And he basically, he's he grabs the snake and he's like flossing his ass with the snake. What is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and by the way, the snake could not be more obsequious here. The snake is just like, oh, I am so sorry, guys. It's the middle of the night. I was in a hurry. My wife's sick. I had just gone and picked her some stuff up from the pharmacy. I was heading back. I didn't see you guys. And he's like, no, I'm going to floss my ass with you. <laughs> Fuck sorry, you. I'm going to floss my ass with you. Fuck you, snake. Fuck you. <laughs> and fuck the moon. I'll destroy the moon. You know what? No more moon. That's yeah, it. Except- <laughs> I'm going to rub the moon on my ass, too. This is what happens, snake and moon. You get, you get rubbed on my ass. Yeah, so the moon laughs at him some more. He gets pissed, and he's like, you know what? Fuck it, moon. I curse you. You don't get to be shiny anymore. And the moon's like, fuck, man. That is all I've got. Yeah. He's shiny. The moon, like, sends out an apology on Twitter, mentions that he's gay. He's like, oh. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a weird, <laughs> it's weird timing, moon. Just say. We're, we're recording this in advance. That was topical when we recorded it. So, <laughs> I it probably still will be. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, but also, I think this is fucking hilarious, too. Because Ganesha, at this point, he starts chewing the moon out. The moon shows up and he's like, dude, I am so sorry for laughing at you. And Ganesha's like, hey, man, you shouldn't make fun of people's physical attributes. Which would be like Eli saying that, right? Like all he's done through this whole thing is, hey, stupid looking cow. Hey, stupid mouse. You guys can't have my food. Don't make fun of people. That's not nice at all. So Ganesha half forgives him, uh, the moon that is. So now the moon gets to be dark half the time and light the other half the time. And that's why we have lunar phases. (laughs) Because a cobra tripped a mouse and the moon laughed at an elephant boy. Fucking duh. (laughs) Is that... (laughs) Is that the Hindu story about the moon works? Oh, basically, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson's full of shit, y'all. That's, <laughs> you can't trust anything that man says. Hey, man, what uh. if I just orbit the Earth and also rotate? We're doing, <laughs> the, we're doing the on-off thing. You know, that you know, shut up. We agreed. And that's that story. Now, <laughs> the narrator pulls up in his Alfa Romeo to his palatial Beverly Hills estate. That's a thing that just happened. I'm not switching movies. I didn't accidentally graft the end of one episode onto the beginning of a different one. That's the next thing that happens in this film. Oh, if the mouse (laughs) fucked his sister and put his face in a giant pile of cheese, I would forgive everything. (laughs) Uh. 
I just this this I love this so much, by the way. This is such a small thing, but they have the mouse in this like super sexy sports car and he pulls up and he gets out. But the sound effect of that car is clearly a junker. Right. He pulls up in this like Alfa Romeo. And it's just put, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. But the, the rat is rolling. He's got a briefcase full of dollars. And he's like, hey, speaking of having a lot of money, that's what the next part of this movie is about. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so, yeah. So now we're going to meet the god of money whose name I never caught. Um, but we meet him in his gilded sky chariot. Finally, yeah. they did a segue that made sense. Like, uh, <laughs> like I get the, the sports car. Okay, like Money I see where he's is, going. Yeah, the other yeah. ones were just naked, and it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, nightcap on. Um. So yeah. So th this the money god shows up at uh, at Shiva and Parvati's place, and he's like, "Hey, man, maybe you guys should come out to dinner at my giant house and look at all my awesome stuff sometime." And they're like, "Oh, this guy's such a dick." No, no, just can't, can't. Is no. that a dick thing to do? I I thought that was delightful. I was like, yeah, bring me to your house. It's nice. Right? And show me your money. I love that when people do that. I yeah. love yeah. rich people. I want to be one. <laughs> They're the best. You've yeah, never. You know what's bad? <laughs> going to a poor person's house. You go to a poor person's house <laughs> and you sit on their bed slash couch slash dinner table. <laughs> That's not a good time. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, Lord Shiva's a dick about it. All of a sudden, he's like from Southie Boston. He's like, you think you're better than me, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to go to your nice castle, your fancy castle. <laughs> Fuck you. You can take my, my super annoying fat kid, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, because Ganesh's ears perk up at the thought of dinner. So he's like, yeah, yeah. No, all right. I'm, I'm going to go work kid. out in my weird bench press. My wife is going to smoke <laughs> while she <laughs> gestates our eighth baby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you can take my kid yeah yeah he'll, he'll be perfect for that his ass gets super chafy though <laughs> here's some ointment you have to put it on for him while he's there so like yeah hourly so he doesn't get shiva or parvati um but he does get ganesha so they, they go back to his palace um the mouse by the way is super fucking impressed the mouse is like guys this is way better than the top of the himalayas we should yeah. maybe maybe think about this um, I just wrote, my God, that looks like Tom's house. Uh, <laughs> I have to cut that. Too. <laughs> and basically in this place, there are basically like thrones on the thrones. There's gold leaf on the gold. It's, it's, the, the mouse is just creaming himself over the opulence. Uh, and the food, they got white squares and those dumplings and bananas. Yeah. No, I wrote, they have cubes, pyramids, triangles, tetrahedrons, uh, all the D&D &D dice. Sugar cubes are so good. <laughs> They're so simple. So nobody serves those enough. Oh, sugar cubes. I always put LSD in them. That weirds them up. Yeah, um, so, Either way, they taste good. Sorry, I just got here from 1977, guys. They put <laughs> LSD in sugar cubes Is now. it absinthe in this fancy... <laughs> and, and care to join me at a speakeasy? We can find ourselves a loose girl who necks down at breakneck point. Racial slur. <laughs> So, okay, so now it's time for the voracious appetite montage, which will go on for, oh, 15 minutes. Oh, God. Yeah, it, it's just like at a certain point, the money guy's just like, you know what, dude, just keep feeding him. See how long it takes him to seven himself to death. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and in case you were worried that the gluttony montage would be short, no need to fret. Um, it, there's, there's another 10 minutes. As a matter of fact, at a certain point, he eats all the food and he's still hungry, so he starts eating like the utensils and the benches and whatnot. <laughs> mm -hmm. at, at what point at what point he finishes the like normal amount of food that they had ready and he's he yells at a servant Ganesh is like about more food quick quick and they literally had to cut because they couldn't make the CGI servant walk faster <laughs> he's like <laughs> he's like all the way across the room he starts with they cut and he's right next yeah. to him. <laughs> Right. And then finally he turns to his host and he's like, bring me more food. He's like, you have eaten all the food. And he's like, well, then I'm going to eat you, motherfucker. And he's like, oh, this what? is a, a weird way to repay generosity. What question? <laughs> what's the moral of this religious story? Don't feed people. I think so. Don't be rich and generous. I, yeah, I don't know. So the money God goes back to Shiva. He's like, oh, my God, take your gluttonous fat fuck of an elephant kid back. I can't feed him enough. 
I heard a and lot he's of like, these. Oh, I overheard a lot of these conversations as a child. It was helpful. <laughs> they stick with you. You gotta, you know. <laughs> are you marrying those salsas? What are you doing? <laughs> I am. Married. I can't get I can't, my, my hand. It's in the the thing. dipping is hard. I'm sorry for being a, <laughs> sorry for being a problem solver. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but but the money god is super sorry about being so prideful because apparently that's the lesson of the story. Um, and then we get an eating montage reprise. He starts just sucking shit up Kirby style. Yeah, he's eating the yeah. table. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but right before he starts eating the carpet, Money God brings him a bowl of rice and he's like, oh, yeah, that'll do. And now he's full. And everyone learned their lesson. Yep. I guess the lesson of this is it's easy to fill up on starches. (laughs) (laughs) Start with the starchy stuff. Yeah. (laughs) So with that important story out of the way, we move on to our final adventure of the evening. Um, you remember how there was a demon that kidnapped all the gods, took over the world, was breathing fire and killing everybody? Yeah, Grandma just remembered him too. <laughs> yeah, Grandma, absolutely. The invincible guy? <laughs> absolutely, I remember yeah, yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, but only Ganesha can help. Or actually, only Ganesha can send his little brother to take care of it. <laughs> just the sit best. back and offer moral support from afar. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, quick, you got to come stop him. And Ganesh is like, yeah, oh, I would totally fuck him up. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to root for you <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Uh, but let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut to this massive battle. Now, we can't, like, this is the worst imaginable CGI, and yet they tried to get a thousand people on screen together. So there's just people floating above other people, and there's just, like, everyone's green and moving in the same way at the same time. It's really painful to watch. Yeah, this is like a 1997 video game that you were trying to play on your 1993 computer, and the first time you realized that, like, you couldn't play all the games on your old computer... That's yeah, right. this, the scene, just like things <laughs> blipping in and out. Yeah, right. There's a loading moment. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It buffers for a minute. Um, so, yeah. So, oh, oh, and by the way, also, apparently the invincible god is a Targaryen. Uh, he has dragons now. Dragons and, and what appears to be a pug of pegacorn because he's got two dragons <laughs> and then just like a, yes. a dog face thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's riding Carl. But the dragons in the fight don't end up helping. No. They're just nope. like flying around. They're fucking it up. They're just like, hey, fuck, man. I, these dragons are the worst. I told you they weren't going to help. <laughs> so just watch. Just watch. Tell me which side they're on. Which yeah, side right, are the dragons right. on? Exactly. <laughs> we brought them here. Are they on our team? Can't tell. Well, yeah, because like once we see one of them swoop down, pick one dude up and drop him from only like 10 feet up, right? Like, <laughs> ow, my guy's knees. like, wee! Okay, yeah. back to fighting. <laughs> so, right. Right. But then they all go to fuck up Ganesha and Ganesha just like blows at him and they all die. So, yep. yeah. So anyway, we get this amazingly silly battle sequence. And again, this goes on forever. Uh, there are also in, involved in this battle and these guys seem way more effective than the dragons. There are scorpion handed centaur spiders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those are bad guys. I, I guess, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah. Seems um, late to introduce that character. I would say you want to feature that, just saying. You remember yeah, right, earlier right. in this movie when it was about dumplings? <laughs> <laughs> we have segued to Lobster Centaur. Yeah, exactly. That it's about Lobster Centaur, so now moving on. So, meanwhile, as this battle's going on, Ganesha's brother is fighting the demon dude in the sky uh, with more weapon materializing throwing. Yeah. They're just like hovering up there like, all right, so obviously that shit down there is stupid. Do you want to do the objects thing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course. Turn-based? Yeah, obviously turn. I'm not a fucking savage. Yes, turn-based. <laughs> Jesus. Who goes first? All right, well, all right, well, we'll conjure up rock, paper, scissors. I wanted to see them actually figure it out like that. <laughs> yeah, because you know how much fun it was to watch your friend play old school Final Fantasy? It's like that, the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and by the way, apparently we learned at this point because some of the gods decide to sneak up and go kill Ganesha so that he can have some part to play at the end. Ganesha apparently can grow giant. He could have done this at any point. He hasn't. Seems yep. odd. 
But yeah, he's back at his place just hanging out with a handful of insignificant soldiers turning giant and ice exploding the dragons. Also, he Popeyes his mouse at this point. He gives the mouse a little da-da-da-da-da-da kind of a moment. Yeah, the mouse kills someone. Yeah, cow dude gets to kick a little ass. Yeah. So yeah, everybody gets a moment here. Uh, meanwhile, okay, so Demon Dude's still fighting his little bro. He throws the giant rattle, multiplying giant rattles of death. Um, it gets so bad that his little brother has to pull out his sparkly powers. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and then he and then he throws a spear with a Hindu word on it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, you know, that's the lightning spear. So, you know, yeah. battle, that, battle. That's a win. That's and a win. that kills the invincible demon. Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Why do we do didn't? this whole war thing down there? Let's not overthink it. Let's, he, let's, let's do the throwing, the stuff. He didn't wince. Um, and then, but basically, the mouse cuts <laughs> in and says, um, "Yeah, guys. So there's a lot of other stuff too um, that Ganesh did that was cool. So Ugh. sequel. Oh, oh, that sequel. mouse is like the friend who, when you're done hanging out with them, tries to arrange the next time you're going to see them, and it's like, oh, okay." Why don't we play it by ear? All right. Because <laughs> this did not include us fucking, so I'm not planning for next time. I'll see you next time. I feel socially obligated to see you. <laughs> and that was the climax of this movie, by the way. The, the best story about Ganesh was when his little brother had a big win. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the Peyton Manning of Hindu gods. <laughs> Sad thing for him. Peyton Manning's head does look like an elephant. All right. So <laughs> this is our second infanticidal Hindu children's cartoon. And I, I, I can already start to see patterns emerging. Uh, so based on what we've seen so far, in closing, I want to ask you, what squares do you guys expect we'll eventually see on the Hindu movie bingo card? Ooh, uh, villain given superpowers for meditating super hard. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um. Fetch me a bag of dicks, <laughs> baby dicks, human baby dicks. Somebody will say that in future movies. <laughs> All right. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Bal Ganesh. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to convince ourselves to keep doing this. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. How do I love thee? Oh, good. This I've been looking for. This is from like 1902, right? Yeah, this is a, a Mormon short film created by BYU with a caveat at the front that we don't believe any of this shit about. It might be hard not to fuck because all your friends want you to fuck, but deep down, you know, you don't want to fuck. Don't That's fuck <laughs> the movie. Yeah, don't fuck the movie. Exactly. <laughs> and with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 117 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. After I watched this movie, I made pork chops. They were really good. Mouse eventually did get to fuck that flower. Ganesh's parents always made a super big deal about everything his brother did, like him being a floor manager at Costco. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I was way pleased with that. <laughs> it would be Balra. We're both from the same city, he and I. We have the same hairdo. Both equally going to become president. Yeah, and senator, yeah. You never know. You never, yeah, don't, now we don't know. Uh, I take it back. <laughs> not in the ether. Not in the ether. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. Hey, maybe you meant I was going to become president. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. I just want a medium orgasm. Just one time. <laughs> medium or I went from one minute to forever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where Morgan starts. All right, we're good to go. You could call it hearth bros. <laughs> Let's just let's just let Morgan try to figure out what that means on his own. Let's give it no, no no context. Oh, that's way back. Hearthstoners. That's way. We would make the 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 drug worship and video game crossover market, which is like almost all of it. That's the, yeah. that's that's one market. That's that's yeah. one circle on the diagram. <laughs> Ten. Ten. We just came up with a million dollar billion dollar idea. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Yeah. Don't don't worry about <laughs> don't it. Steal we'll that, don't steal that. Don't steal that. Don't you steal Hearthstoners. I will, take you, I, will, I will put you in a papoose and I will run with you. <laughs> That's a call what? forward, backward. I, sorry, Eli, it was just, you I, just threw me. I had no idea where you were I going. Was with confused. That. That's what they ask Jesus when he asks them what they want for oh, their witch <laughs> in oh. next week's Book of Mormon segment, which is a month from now time. Yeah. So, but yeah, I yeah, did yeah, it wait. already. So let's let's go ahead and cut that. Yeah, was, uh, Heath hasn't even re- Heath hasn't even read the thing that that's based on yet. So it's pretty great. If you anyone- guys next year, I'm going to suggest a book to you guys, <laughs> and there's going to be a thing. All yeah. right. So yeah, Morgan, you can cut all of that stuff up from what should we call our religion? <laughs> Get bench like two fifty though. 250. <laughs> Whatever those those forty fives are, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna make this whole area into a home gym. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next thing you're gonna buy? Don't say treadmill. Treadmill, probably treadmill. treadmill. Buy a probably. treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're running out of space on Earth to run. <laughs> All right, you can control the speed. You can't do that with your legs, really. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you have a single DVD of the Insanity series <laughs> <laughs> lying loose on the floor here. <laughs> I sold the other ones. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.